Hi, my name is Kevin Taylor. I'm president of the uh, Moray Group. This short video today is about our uh, UV resin casting system. Um, we're going to show a little video of the packer inside a piece of pipe with a liner underwater and uh, just to show the differences of the different resins that are used in the industry. There's a lot of confusion going on, so with that, once I get into place, I'll talk a bit more. So we have the packer on the vacuum. I'm going to take the four inch liner, which in its protective sleeve, UV. For this demonstration, I'm just going to place it in place inside. Roll it real tight. Sliding into the pipe. And we'll place the whole device underwater. I've cut holes inside the liner, in, inside the pipe, so we can see the effect. So right now it's still under vacuum. It's underwater. The water is in direct contact with the liner, and you can see through the clear water None of the resin is migrating away. There is no residue running off. There is no drips. As I said, this is a UV non-VOC vinyl ester casting resin made in America. So we'll drop the uh, vacuum, switch over the pressure. And um, we'll let it pressurize up slowly for about a minute at about one, two PSI. This will inflate slowly, displace the water out of the pipe between the liner and the pipe, displace any water that's between the packer and the liner, and expand and push it up the site. We've already proven Prior to this, that the packer needs around five or six psi to be fully expanded in a four-inch plastic pipe. So after about a minute, we'll take the pressure up to two to three psi, a little fold on the end. Should be good. Little added weight. Just push that packer down. So you can see that the uh, the blad is expanding. Are you able to get that? Yeah. It's almost tight against the pipe wall now. Again, it's underwater. Fairly cold water, we had this full of ice a couple of days ago. So we're now at two PSI, so I'm gonna take it up to three to four. Another minute, let it settle, stretch itself out, manipulate itself so it's all pressed and tight. And because it's exposed on both ends, it will expand bigger than the pipe. And in the holes, it will dimple, as we call it in the industry. This means the material stretching in the hole. This forms a mechanical lock. Now with this particular casting resin, once the lights are applied, they will initiate the casting process to begin. And within a few seconds, everything starts to energize. There is no heat. This is a cold cure, cold cast resin system. So with no thermal expansion, no thermal curing as in the standard curing place, this is totally the opposite. And it's a particular resin that has been developed here in the States just for this application. So we're at four PSI now, I'm gonna crank it up to seven. 
And as you can see again, there is no oily residue that's coming out of any of these locations. Over in Europe, there's been a lot of discussion, a lot of misinformation about uh, UV curing, UV casting, you, but most of it is mainly related to mainline work. And there's been a lot of misinformation and misunderstanding of what shrinkage is, what a complete wet out is, what a white patch is, all of those issues. And uh, people have started to make comments about vinyl esters, polyesters, all the different resins. I can tell you right now, on the mainline UV system, the most deployed in Europe and in the States, when the impregnation process is done on their glass, which is another different component, they have to gel that material before they can actually install it and ship it. We can impregnate and immediately start to store it, ship it, and move it to where it's gonna go. There is no resin runoff. And one of the reasons for that is we use a unique glass fiber mat that's woven and seamless. That is not the same as what is in the standard UV industry. There's our mats and glasses that slide, slide and fold together to form the shape, and they're very low pressure applications. We can take this into a much higher application of pressure, 25, 30 PSI, which would be unheard of in a, in a trying to do an 18 line. So we're up to seven. I'm going to take it up to 10, one or two seconds. There is no coating on this, it's raw casting resin sitting in water. No coating, no barrier, no membrane. So with that said, go to my little timer. Clear it so it started, and now we'll turn on the lights. These are UV LED, LED uh, UV LED lights. There's several thousand in this packet, and the way that these lights work is that the the lens on the light on the LED expands as the packer moves. So the lens shows the light in 110 degrees. And we have two LEDs side by side, every single half an inch. So we have an abundance of light. Everything is run through this control box, through the reel, the push hooks. Air and power is coming through here. This is all 24 volt DC. It's not a generator, it's not 240 volts, 110, it's 24 volts, so it's low voltage low amperage, low power, no heat, with no heat, there is no thermal expansion, with no thermal expansion, there's no shrinkage, equal and opposite reactions. So in about five minutes, this will start and be finished. And you can see right around the peripheral edges of the hole, the resin has actually started to cast already and move towards a solid state. So right now we're at running about what three minutes, two minutes, then a few more minutes it will have cast in place underwater in a non-thermal, non-heating situation. The glass liner that we use, and this is one that's inside a, a two inch, so we can go all the way down to two inch, and you can see, if you get close, there is no apparent shrinkage. This, is, this, is, this was done earlier today, and I'll be doing another video with the same system. So you have a mechanical lock, it's expanded, you can see the dimple, the shape, you can feel it. This was also done underwater. There is no seam. So it allows for this material to expand 
to follow the contour of the packer and the silicone bladder. Push it and press it and cast it in place. And we say cast in place because we're using the pipes, the sanitary pipes, the storm pipes as the mold. And all we're doing is deploying a, a packer device to set in place a casting. The uh, combined strengths of the resin and the glass are four times stronger than the traditional felt carcasses used in most applications. We're still at about 10, 10, 11 psi. We're running 24.2 volts and it's telling us that we're drawing 3.7 amps. Not a lot of power. Not a lot of power is needed. This could all be run by two 12 volt batteries and be deployed. The standard packer, five foot long, 10 foot long, off the operation of the reel. This is the LSR Pro. This unit can mount on the top, it's detachable, you can carry it away. And with the LSR Pro, there's a three inch packer, a two inch packer, and a six inch packer. The two inch is a smaller unit, only two feet. And one foot repair but two feet long. All the rest are five feet for either a four foot repair or they can be a ten foot. The connection point down there is the multiple changeover so if you disconnect that you can put on the next pack. You can hear that, that is solid. Five minutes. So after the five minutes for this four inch, it's less than three minutes for a two inch. We, we recommend six to eight minutes minimum for a six inch. So we switch off the lights. It's cold. There is no heat, but it would be cold because it's in the water. We switch off the air and go to vacuum. Increase the pressure so the uh, valve works. This will slowly pull out all of the air out of the device. And we'll make a space. For this unit to sit. You've seen now a live video of the casting in place underwater. Hard casting place. So in a few seconds when that vacuum is moved, I'll be able to withdraw the packet. It's cold, there is no temperature, and obviously it's a little the, uh, the water. One of the unique things on this resin is that the monomer, um, different from thermal resins, being a, a monomer that's gas and you can smell it. This is a non-VOC resin, but the monomer is a liquid. So when the casting is actually cast in place, it gives off a release agent. That's a natural phenomenon. And what it allows now is that the operator Instead of the old days when packers used to get stuck and everybody went to the silicone, they could use different fabrics on this unit because it has the release agent. As you can see, this is unique. The release agent. The temperature here is probably around 55, 60 degrees from the temperature of the light inside. There is really no temperature differential. So this will vacuum down in a few seconds. We do recommend once you vacuum down, clean the vacuum. It's critical that these lights that are inside here can see to the resin liner that you're applying. Without that, the lights get blocked. So keeping it clean is critical. A quick wipe over with a dry rag and 
since it's silicone, you can use acetone. We recommend soapy water to spray it, clean it off. You don't need to lubricate it. You don't need to mess with it. But look after it. The connection at this point. Inside is the electrical connection and the air. This can be just hand tight. Sometimes you may need a little tape on there because it's an MPT fitting, but it's an air fitting and a water fitting. So, you can see a nice pipe cast in place underwater using the light ray system from Moray. Thank you.